I think it's chiefly about escapism. I think it's about taking that time out of our busy lives. And I think that's what is so brilliant about cinema specifically. We're Oxford's only independent cinema um, and the oldest as well, oldest purpose-built cinema in Oxford. We've been here since 1911 and it's had a, a, a crazy old history. It's been closed and became a carpet warehouse for a bit. It's had uh, loads of really unique owners over the years who have kind of really, really championed independent cinema and world cinema and classic cinema. And we're literally on people's doorstep. We are in the middle of a really bustling neighbourhood. Well, right now the cinema is up for sale and uh, we're trying to become community owned. After we become community owned, I think this is like many other cinemas around the country, thinking about how we entice audiences back to the cinema who haven't come back after the pandemic. You can see from the front of the cinema what a beautiful, beautiful cinema it is. It has a really, really long legacy and a long history. But the cinema really kind of like became iconic in the city in the 1970s with Bill Heine and Pablo Butcher who owned it and they they were doing really radical things here at the cinema you know kind of like they would do these wild late night parties they got into a bit of hot water with Kubrick's lawyers at one point when they tried to show A Clockwork Orange and it was not meant for UK release at the time Stanley Kubrick's lawyers literally turned up on the night served the owners with a writ in the pub next door. So, you know, we've kind of always had this reputation for kind of like doing things a bit differently to what kind of like more mainstream cinema is all about. And that's a legacy which has continued. The cost of living crisis at the moment is having a real impact on our audiences and us. Um, and we really need to um, make sure that coming to the cinema can become a regular part of people's weekly habits and things like this. So we have just started a um, program where everyone between the age of 15 and 25 can come, come to the cinema for just five pounds each. So we're now the cheapest cinema in Oxford. We work in partnership with local organisations such as Oxford Pride or the Oxford International Women's Festival the Oxford University and Oxford Brooks University as well and do events with those. We really love being able to kind of like do post-screening discussions, Q&As, things like that, or showing films with live musical accompaniment. And that's something that I specifically really, really love. For example, just a few weekends ago, we showed a uh, 100th uh, anniversary screening of Nosferatu with a live score by a Bristol band called Minima and it was one of the best things. Being able to bring those special events and again doing things which maybe most people don't usually see in their kind of like multiplexes, that's what makes this cinema and independent cinema really special. It's actually quite emotional to talk about the last two years. I think it's taken enormous amount of resilience. I've got the dates of like, the lockdowns and the reopening you know, days like, seared in my memory because, you know, we were just, it was, you know, we were working from week to week trying to figure out whether we could, when, when, when we would be able to open the doors and things like this. Vivid memory for me was in 2020, I think it was in like April or May. I spent weeks and weeks poring over our cash flow, trying to figure out whether we'd have enough money to make payroll, pay our landlords, things like this. It was a really difficult and stressful time for me, but also for, for all of the staff members in about May 2020, when we realised how just how long the cinema was going to be closed for, we realised that actually we'd run out of money in, in, in a couple of months' time. I remember having a meeting with Tom and the team here and thinking about what we could do. So we started a crowdfunder in uh, August 2020, and we had a crowdfunder to raise, I think at the time it was 17 thousand pounds that's what we needed and we just went out and asked our audiences and said look this is what we need can you give us 20 pounds whatever and the most amazing thing happened within two hours we got 17 thousand pounds from our audiences and this is not for people giving big amounts of money just our audiences just absolutely loved us wanted to show us that they cared giving five ten twenty pounds and then over the next week we managed to get to 50 £5,000 as well. It allowed us to survive for the next year, but also showed us how important we are to our community um, of cinema goers and people who live in East Oxford. If Oxford didn't have an independent cinema in its, in its town, I think that would be a real shame for the residents and the students specifically here in, in the town. So 
yeah, we've got to become community owned so we can continue doing these great events and continue working with great partners as well. And one of the things that's baked into our plans is supporting independent filmmaking. I think that having an independent cinema in Oxford that shows lots and lots of independent films is what is needed for creative people to, to A, fall in love with film and B, learn about what's, what's out there and, and be inspired.